Well, as I take a sip of my double espresso Americano here, I'd love for you to tell us about stimulants. Sure, there's no shortage of these in most of our lives. Uh, and of course, you can cover the health benefits of it later. You, maybe you have an episode. Yes, we have an episode on caffeine oh. and it does have certain health benefits, although one has to use caffeine correctly in yeah. order to drive right. those. Yeah. So there's caffeine is the easy one to start with and we won't belabor the point here. Uh, the evidence is strong. It has an ergogenic effect. Uh, you can take it at whatever dosage is reasonable for you. And of course there is uh, a bit of a learning curve there such that obviously the more you take it, the more you need to take, even though there's actually some recent evidence showing even folks who are uh, acclimated to it will still see an ergogenic benefit, even though if they don't feel a big boost of it. So typically that takes 30 to 45 minutes or so, but it's highly dependent upon the person. So some people can smell coffee and immediately feel better. And that's probably working actually through a different mechanism um, of anticipation, but you can take it there. It, the half-life of it is, you know, four to six hours or something like that. It can totally depends on the person. So don't let it ruin your sleep. But if you take it prior to performance, it has a, a noticeable effect on particularly endurance. Uh, maximum strength may be less, well, quite clearly less so. Um, in fact, the data are mixed there on whether it actually does anything for peak strength. Although I think most people would uh, rec would suggest that, you know, you're going to take it prior to trying to truly lift as, as high as trying to, you know, lift a one repetition max or similar. But most of the, the documented effects are on the, the endurance-based activities. Yes. So my read of the literature uh, in terms of performance-enhancing effects of caffeine are that one to three milligrams, I want to make sure that people hear the units correctly before mm -hmm. people blitz themselves out with the caffeine, one to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight about 30 minutes prior to exercise has a definite performance-enhancing effect. It also has a definite mental performance enhancing effect, especially when people who are regular caffeine users have abstained from caffeine for anywhere from two to 15 days. And, and that's an extremely rare circumstance. Mm. But even if they have not, it appears that one to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight of caffeine taken about, again, it's not super precise as far as I uh, can see, uh, about 30 minutes before the event starts, um, can really enhance reaction time and power output and uh, as uh, well as, as you mentioned, endurance. When I was researching the caffeine episode, one interesting caveat that um, I discovered was that if people are not caffeine adapted, they are not regular users of caffeine, the sudden introduction of caffeine can really degrade performance, mostly because people don't know how to operate at that high level of autonomic arousal. Have you ever observed that? Yeah, hundred percent. In fact, there's actually data going up as high as 10 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Wow. Which is in fact, once you cross the five milligram per kilogram threshold, you will start seeing performance decrements. So there's absolutely such a thing of ruining your performance with too much caffeine. So most people listening to this, if you're thinking, wow, they said caffeine, I'm all in. And then you just stop listening. And now you, you know, go for your quad espresso shot before you're every time you go to work out you probably are passing that threshold if you think about those numbers one to three milligrams per kilogram body weight if you weigh 100 kilograms that's 220 pounds that'd be something like two to 500 milligrams of caffeine which is like a pretty high amount um, but you know a coffee is going to get you close an espresso is going to get you somewhat in that ballpark depending on source and stuff um, so you don't really need to go and blister your brain with caffeine and in fact if you do it's, it's quite common and in fact likely that you'll actually make performance worse. Right. Yeah. The amount of caffeine in different coffees and sodas, et cetera, of course varies. One thing that people ought to know is that the smallest of commercially available um, coffees at the most popular commercial vendors <laughs> <laughs> um, generally contain anywhere from 250 to 350 milligrams of caffeine. What that means is that the so-called medium and the large contain as much as 500 milligrams or one gram of caffeine. So for you morning um, large coffee at uh, commercial vendor um, <laughs> uh, drinkers, if you're wondering why you get an, a headache if you're 30 minutes late on that caffeine, or um, if you can't access that caffeine at all, or even if you're drinking coffee, excuse me, from another source, and you're finding like, oh, it's really not doing it for me. It's because the amount of caffeine in the now commercially sold 
uh, coffees is exceedingly high. It's about two or three times higher than the standard lookup tables that you'll see on the internet. So I'm not saying that to demonize uh, caffeine. We can pretty quickly adapt to and form a tolerance to caffeine. Um, some people never really can get over the jitters. Other people um, are just fine well, with uh, even a thousand milligrams of caffeine, but only because they've been drinking a lot of caffeine consistently. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's also wildly inconsistent from location to location, uh, the brew type, the functionality. So yeah, that, that stuff can be very hard to figure out what, what's happening. There's only one way really to uh, objectively measure caffeine and that's use caffeine tablets and they work pretty well. Actually, uh, someone I know um, who's uh, prominent in the podcast space uses 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine in tablet form combined with tea. Yep. So they've now conditioned themselves to think that herbal tea actually has this caffeinating <laughs> effect. But um, tablet form caffeine, while I'm not recommending it 